Thank you all. Um, this is not uh, intended to be high on uh, facts and figures, but it's intended to be inspirational. Um, what individuals and uh, schools and small donors can contribute to Haiti's recovery. So um, how do I do this? Let's see here. There we go. Um, everybody knows the earthquake uh, struck on January 12th. Uh, here is the, um, the capital. Project MediShare, as Brian has said, has been operating in Haiti uh, for the past 15 years. And I think um, there are several reasons why we were able to mount an effective response. First of all, we have been there for 15 years. Secondly, uh, there's a critical mass of faculty at University of Miami who do not believe the first rule of medicine is to do no harm. That's something I think the lawyers came up with. It's actually to do good, and then maybe not do any harm as a also a secondary thing. Uh, uh, beneficence, uh, the principle of beneficence. It ought to be part of our professional calling. It's in danger of being lost here in the United States, but I think those who have come down, come down to Haiti have recaptured that, and it's a wonderful thing to see. Um, the third thing is uh, we are dedicated to the belief that the problems you read about in the newspaper, including the enormous destruction of the earthquake, uh, are the result of uh, factors that are actually happening in rural Haiti. So before the earthquake struck, we had uh, three significant programs in Haiti, uh, which gave us an infrastructure of Haitian workforce that we could call upon. The first is a program to train Haitian doctors to be family doctors, whoops, hmm. uh, up in Capacien, uh, which is up at the very top of the city. We've graduated 35 residents in family medicine. All but two are working in the country. It used to be all but one, but one died in the earthquake. Uh, Dr. Mario Paginal. Uh, we are also in the, in the uh, Central Plateau, a very rural area up here, where we're conducting health and community development programs. Um, in the process, we've developed a cadre of Haitian American faculty and American faculty who are very devoted to Haiti. And so devoted, in fact, that when the earthquake struck within 12 hours, we had our first advanced team on the ground. And part of the inspiration is not just what the University of Miami has been able to do, uh, but um, what, how the entire South Florida community at all levels of society rallied around uh, Project MediShare uh, to try and do something significant in response uh, to this. Uh, private citizens, wealthy private citizens, donated their jets. And within two days, we had three trips a day uh, shuttling back and forth to Haiti with volunteers and supplies. Um, we first settled into um, a um, very, very primitive uh, set of tents uh, with, uh, in the United Nations compound with 300 critically injured patients. Uh, the initial advanced team was one neurosurgeon, Dr. Green, who co-founded MediShare with me, uh, two trauma surgeons. Uh, the volunteers grew by about 30, today, 30 per day until we ended up with a volunteer group of nurses and doctors and other health workers uh, uh, averaging about 200 volunteers on any given day. They come down and they stay for uh, approximately a week, uh, and we have now uh, expanded uh, to orthopedic surgeons, uh, rehabilitation specialists, wound care specialists, uh, in addition to trauma surgeons, uh, pediatricians, and family doctors. Okay, this is our original tent with our original 300 patients. Uh, we had no running water, we had no toilets. Uh, we did, however, have a, a lot of equipment and supplies, which allowed us to make an incredible difference. Um, so I'm going to run through these slides because we are pressed for time because I want to continue with the in inspiration. Um, in the first few weeks, we saw over 2,000 uh, uh, patients. We are now up to 20,000 patients we've cared for uh, since the earthquake. While we're maintaining our programs, caring for 100,000 patients up in uh, the, uh, the central plateau, uh, now, um, up from 85,000 to 110,000, and uh, over 125,000 uh, patients up in Capacien. Um, 
It's a long involved story. You'll get to see the star of this story in a minute. Uh, but a famous Miami basketball player uh, came down, uh, was so moved by what he saw uh, that he came back and forced our local basketball team to donate four event tents. And these became our field hospitals. So we now had a, a pediatric ward, an adult ward. Behind the pediatric ward, our operating rooms and the only functioning uh, uh, intensive care units in the country. Here's our planes of volunteers coming in. We had a lot of celebrities. Funny aside, um, there are only two ways into the country um, uh, uh, after the, immediately after the earthquake. You could either fly into the Dominican Republic and then get a car or a truck and try and get into the earthquake zone, or you could hitch a ride with one of the Project Metashare volunteer planes. Uh, so we ended up having a lot of uh, celebrity uh, um, uh, newscasters staying at our tent. <laughs> um, when the comfort came, uh, the USS Comfort is a hospital ship. Uh, uh, even the Comfort uh, ship, which, uh, um, Michael, how many beds does the Comfort have? Well, it can do 500 Yeah. Uh, even the 500 bed Comfort was overwhelmed by the magnitude of this earth earthquake. So they uh, utilized um, our field hospital as the triage point. Uh, anybody who had a, a patient they wanted to get to the comfort, they had to come to see us first, and we decided if we could treat them uh, on the ground or whether we would forward them along. Since the comfort is left, we have really picked up uh, that role of, um, of taking care of the most critically injured uh, patients. We are now getting volunteers from uh, uh, all around the country. I am proud to say that uh, George Washington University were among the first non-University of Miami volunteers uh, to come down, and they continue to help. And I think that that's the, no, there we go. Um, we're fortunate in Miami to have both um, uh, a, a vibrant Haitian American community and a vibrant uh, uh, Haitian American professional community. Uh, so Haitian American nurses and doctors and other health workers uh, were critical uh, because they not only spoke the language uh, but uh, understand the culture and the Haitian healthcare system. So we partnered Haitian American healthcare professionals with uh, non-Haitian um, American uh, and they formed teams and delivered effective, culturally competent patient care. We also established a command center, uh, uh, ministers and, man and managers at the University of Miami to manage this, what became a huge enterprise. And just to put a face on it, um, let's hit, uh, yeah, this one first. As our last panel was talking about the problems of AT and T is investing billions to upgrade and Sorry build out our wired and wireless <laughs> networks. Investment in broadband, high-speed internet. Some of you may have seen this story, but uh, as a family doctor, um, I take particular pride, and I find this particularly inspirational. The story of Baby Jenny starts here in this collapsed apartment building in Port-au-Prince. When the earthquake hit. Two-month-old Jenny was with her mother, Nadine Devilmay, who was knocked unconscious and taken to the hospital. Every day, Nadine told her husband, Junior Alexis, to go back to their home and search for Jenny in the rubble. And every day, for four days, Junior came back with the same answer, I can't find Jenny. The couple started to give up all hope of ever finding their daughter alive, until what the parents call a miracle happened. On the fifth day, somebody else found her alive and whisked her off to the hospital. Jenny was brought to the field hospital where I was stationed. She's got a depressed skull fracture and something we call a flail chest. She's had broken ribs. Doctors said Jenny would die within hours if she didn't get to a real hospital in the United States. I thought the State Department wasn't allowing patient patients. I don't care what the State Department cares about. Defying the law, doctors put Jenny in an ambulance to get on a plane to Miami. They assumed she was an orphan and told the driver, if you can get to the plane on time, we'll name the baby after you. The driver's name was Patricia, and for months, that's what the baby was called until it was learned that Jenny was her real name. Jenny was led into the United States and taken straight here to room 16 of the Pediatric Intensive Care Unit at Jackson Memorial Hospital. 
Now, by the time her parents found out she'd been taken here, it was too late. They weren't allowed into the United States. They had no passport, no visa. They didn't even have proof that Jenny was their baby. For nearly two months, Nadine and Junior tried to get Haitian and U.S. authorities to believe them that this was their child. I visited them at their home in a tent city. So you say this is your baby? Donc on dit c'est bébé. Yes, Jenny's my daughter. I mean, how does it feel as a mother to know that your baby has just flown off without you to another country? I have a lot of problems, she said. I can't sleep. Meanwhile, back in the United States, lawyers arranged for a DNA test. It took weeks, but finally it proved that Nadine and Junior were truly Jenny's parents. Several more weeks of legal work later, Nadine and Junior were allowed to come to the United States. Today is the day. At the Port au Prince Airport, Nadine and Junior thanked the doctor who saved their daughter's life and boarded a plane to Miami, to the foster home where their baby has lived for months. Absolutely ahead of the developmental curve. A Laura happy Hart, reunion for parents who once thought their daughter was dead in the rubble of Haiti's earthquake. Elizabeth Cohen, CNN, Miami. So, one less orphan <laughs> for Haiti. Okay, uh, I'm going to just start running the beginning of the next tape as we're transitioning for the next speaker. Uh, there's a very famous alumnus of another uh, 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 District of Columbia uh, institution of higher education who's become a real spokesperson for us. Uh, and, you know, uh, as much as we can do with volunteers, it still takes a certain amount of uh, fundraising. So uh, hit it. This is, is that school, morning, Georgetown? Miami. Yeah. <laughs> I've just returned from Haiti, helping Project MediShare with the earthquake relief effort. I've never seen anything like the destruction and the need. I'm calling now to ask for your help. If you've already made a donation, we thank you. If you can give more, please do. If you're not giving yet, I urge you to do so today. Project MediShare is doing heroic work around the clock. They're saving lives but we need your assistance to reach more people in desperate need right now. Please help. There comes a time when we hear certain calls. The Esteban family that uh, recorded the version of We Are the World and prepared it specifically for this fundraiser. So we've got the Miami Heat, the Estebans, uh, President Chalala, uh, and all kinds of other people in between. Thank you, Dr. Fournier.